Hi kids, welcome back to the shop. Very exciting, very exciting. Maybe one of the most exciting days ever with this car so far. Uh, everything's ready to go on it. I still don't have uh, door glass in it, but for what I'm doing, doesn't matter. Uh, today, it is May 19th. It is the opening day of our weekly car show. We have a big weekly car show here in Winnipeg, and this is the first one. And uh, it's at a place called the Pony Corral. And it's a pretty big car show. And uh, it's a long weekend, so Monday's a holiday. Tomorrow's a holiday. And there's generally a good turnout for this thing. Now, it's been pouring rain for the last week. So lots of uh, water all over the place. So that may put a damper on things. Pardon the pun. But uh, we're going to take Camaro to its very first car show today. So I've got some cameras on it. I got my... Um, Insta360 on the inside. I'm going to put GoPro. I have two GoPros. I'll put the GoPros on it somewhere. Anyways, the first thing I got to do is uh, I checked the whole car over. I did all that. I went underneath it, checked my fluid levels and uh, checked for leaks. And I made sure everything was tight. It is. So next thing up is, uh, well, let's go for a drive. Let's, uh, let's go, go on the highway. Let's try it out in fourth, fifth, and sixth gears, which it's never been in and see how it is on the highway. And uh, then we're gonna bring it back here. We're gonna check everything over again, check for leaks, etc. again, and uh, anything else that may crop up at that time. And then we're hitting the car show circuit. We're gonna put her in a car show, gonna get a good seat. And uh, let's see what the locals reaction is to uh, Casper the Pro Touring Camaro. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm back from test drive and first car show, and uh, part of it went very poorly. <laughs> the test drive went very poorly. So I went out on our local streets and um, encountered a couple of issues. Uh, the clutch went hard all of a sudden. Like it wouldn't push down. And uh, <clears throat> so getting it back, getting the car back to the shop was really hard. Because uh, I had to, at a stop sign, I would have to put stop, put the car in gear with the engine shut off. And then start the engine and go. And then, so I got it home that way. Couldn't figure out what was going on. So I uh, put the car up on the lift. And I had Bridget push on the clutch pedal and it wouldn't move if i crack the line open then it would go to the floor okay but why isn't it doing anything inside like the hydraulic the mcleod hydraulic throwout bearing which it's the exact same setup that i had at autocross those last two events of last year and had zero issues so i don't know so um I looked up inside the transmission. There's a, you can see in the transmission, you can actually see the throw up bearing going in and out. And you could see it when you push on the clutch, you could see it move a little bit, just a little bit. But then uh, I noticed that if I stuck a, uh, if I stuck a pry bar in between the fingers of the, the pressure plate, and the throw up bearing, I could push it really far away from the fingers of the pressure plate. So there's on the McLeod, like I went and I, I saved the instructions for everything. So I went back and I looked at the instructions and there's a threaded collar inside there that is used for adjustment to get the right amount of gap, which is a hundred thou between the throw up bearing and the fingers of the pressure plate. 
And I know that this was right when I first assembled everything because I had there's a diagram and you measure these different things. And I think I have that in a video. It was all measured and it was all working flawlessly. But that rotating, that threaded collar somehow had rotated on its own. And now it had like, a, you know, a quarter or a half inch gap between. So when I was pumping the clutch... It was pumping it up to the maximum. It was pumping the throwout bearing to its absolute limit. And if I had just if I just pushed super hard, I probably would have popped the seal on the throwout bearing. So, okay. That was just after the first test drive. Uh, also, my alignment was off. The steering wheel was cockeyed a little bit. So, whatever. I uh, corrected that. And my speedometer was not correct when I was doing 70 kilometers an hour on my speedometer the car was actually doing 90 kilometers an hour so uh, a little bit of doodly doop with the computer i fixed that problem so it's dead accurate now so that's good now what i did about the throw up bearing i tried to use a pick to get in there to maybe grab onto that rotating and rotate it back out so i could get the proper distance and make everything all copacetic again i couldn't the transmission would have to come out in order to fix that. Uh, I still wanted to go to the first big car show of the season. So uh, what I did was I made an aluminum spacer that goes between the, the throw-up bearing and the transmission. So instead of butting up against the transmission, it was butting up against an aluminum spacer. So I just quickly whipped up an aluminum spacer and I put it up inside there and I bolted it in place. It's all bolted in. It's not going anywhere. And it worked. Uh, drove it. No problemo. Um, the clutch is hard to push though. So I wonder if something got a little jacked or in, in that whole process, but I'll build a sort that out when I get the transmission out, but that's not right now. Uh, anyways. Okay. Corrected the steering, corrected the, that thing with the clutch. So we went to the car show at the car show. As we were pulling into the car show, I had to back into a spot. Well, let me tell you, we showed up at this car show and we broke necks. Like everybody was like, whoa, uh, look at this. Like people were stopping part. Now, I, I didn't have a camera for any of this because in my test drive and coming back and stuff, I had the camera running, but all my cameras were, all, the SD cards were already full, full, full at that point. So I just had no cameras going when we pulled into the car show. I'm sorry, I don't have any video of it, but it was a big smash hit. The Camaro, everybody loves it. Uh, I spent two, three hours doing nonstop talking, answering questions, pointing people to the YouTube channel. I have a QR code sticker on the car, so I just say, hey, scan that with your phone. There was lots of that, lots of questions. Only one person noticed that the car is wide-bodied. He's He has his own Camaro, and he's like, how on earth do you fit those big tires in there? And he'd start looking at it. He's like, oh, your car is like wider. You widened this, didn't you? Yeah. So only one person picked up on that. Um, yeah, a ton of questions. Mostly what engine, what horsepower, what transmission, uh, you know, um, who, who made the frame and the suspension, that kind of thing. And what size are your tires? <laughs> those are the most common questions. But it was a huge hit. Uh, but the problem was, another problem, well, it didn't really just crop up because I've had the same problem at autocross. You remember that I had that problem with the power steering, the whining power steering and the shooting power steering fluid out the top of the reservoir. Well, that popped up again, that problem. And when we were backing into the spot, it really started making noise. And then when we shut the car off, the reservoir was empty and fluid was all over the inside of the engine bay, including the bottom side of the hood. Like it shot up and squirted the bottom side of the hood. So we cleaned all that up. I ran to Canadian tire. I picked up some more power steering fluid. I put that in there, filled it up for the ride home and which is only a few miles or kilometers and it's already empty again. So I don't know where it's going, but we have a power steering problem. And this is the second pump that's been on here. I put this whole system on the CVF serpentine system 
and it included a power steering pump. I put the whole thing on and it was a problem immediately. It was a problem. I called CVF. I think I did show all this in a video. I called CVF and they sent me a brand new higher volume pump. Put that on. It has the exact same problem. And I have a big cooler on it. So it's not like it's overheating. I don't know what the problem is. I really don't. Is it? I don't know. It's frustrating. Uh, the actual driving the car, it's very fast. It's fun. Uh, it's it's really good. Um, but it has some teething problems, you know? It's got this power steering issue that's very bothersome. And, uh, yeah, I got to sort, sort this stuff out. Figure out where all that power steering fluid's going. Because it's not really going on the ground, I don't think. Maybe it's, I don't know. I have to look into that, where it is going. But anyway, um, yeah, so this isn't much of a video. So I'm going to have to make this part of another video. Although I see that I've been talking for eight and a half minutes. So maybe I can edit this into a decent 10 minute video. We'll see. But anyways, um, some success, but some failure. Everybody loves the car. Everybody thinks it's very beautiful. Awesome. I love it. Um, but it's got some issues that are frustrating because I, I just, I just don't know. I don't know what the problem, what it is. I'll start double checking everything. Maybe it's two lines are backwards on the power steering. I don't know. Let me look into it. Okay. So I hope this comes in video, but that fitting right there, this is my power steering rack. You can see this fitting right here. That's a little loose. Fluid is pouring out of there. So I think that's what's probably sucking air in there as well, which is causing my power steering problem. So I don't know if it's uh, the, it's a broken fitting or if it's loose, but uh, when I start the car, oil just fluid just pours out of that fitting right there. So I need to take this one off here to, in order to tighten that one there. So let's do that and see if that helps. So I believe this is the culprit right here. This is, uh, let me put this on a table here. This is a uh, power steering. This is the fitting that goes into the box, into the rack. And there's, this is supposed to be a single piece seal, like O-ring. And you can see it is, whoops, there goes the one part. It's broken into two parts. Where'd the other part go? Here we are. It's broken down into two parts. And it should be like this end, which is one piece. So the difference between this end and this end is this is a little too long. This is when this was made, this was made too long. So this part here was hitting the bottom, like it was, it was bottoming out and not allowing the seal, which seals against this, this lip here. So, um, I'm going to grind this down a little bit, make it shorter, make it the same length as this one, but I do need to get myself a new O-ring for there. So I need to run and get a, an O-ring to, uh, work with that. So let's hope that fixes it up. All right. So this is the fitting that was leaking like crazy. And I put new O-rings in there. That's a little black, that's a little black O-ring you see there. I put new O-rings in it and it still pours out of there. So I went to my local hydraulics place and this is all they could do for me was, there you can see uh, with an AN fitting, it's an AN6 fitting and then this goes in there. And so I hope I have enough room by the cross member to fit this in. And uh, well, I hope that solves my problem. Fingers crossed. Well, it worked that, uh... That hydraulic hose I put on for the power steering cured the problem. I have great power steering now, and uh, yeah, everything's working really good. I took the car for its longest drive so far, about 40 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles, but uh, 25 miles maybe. Yeah, so I took it out for a drive. I took some beautiful pictures of it uh, with the sun going down. Uh, it does have a drive shaft vibration above 110 kilometers per hour so i need to check my pinion angles i suspect that the pinion angle isn't quite right because it was the exact same thing with the suburban when i did that one it wasn't quite you know the angle and uh it vibrated so uh i have a brand new drive shaft that was fully balanced so that 
that can't be it. So I'm thinking it's the drive shaft angle. So I will check that. It is adjustable. The Speedway Motors torque arm suspension in the back, it has these notches and you can change the angle of the pinion. So that should be a fairly quick fix. Um, I raised the ride height on the rear of the car. And I think I may have actually just increased the preload on the spring. If that makes any sense to you. There's two different locations I can bolt the shock in. And I have it on the lower... No, I have it on the upper location, which means that the car sits lower. And so to raise the car up, I, you know, screw the perches on the coilovers. And I think I was just increasing the spring load or the preload. So I need to look at that. But these are all little tiny things. The other thing is, uh, when I drove the car yesterday, everything went really well, except after a while, uh, one of my heater hoses, it was too close to the headers, and it sprung an itsy bitsy little leak. So I replaced the hose and I've rerouted it away from the header. So that's done. But after driving around and parking it and looking underneath, no drips, no nothing. Everything's working great. Um, it's a beast. This thing is a beast. Up until today, I sort of thought maybe some of my closest friends, I'd let them drive it, but there's no way I'm going to let anybody but Bridget drive this car. It is too much of a monster. Like, it's just, it's wild. I, I mean, it feels way faster than the Pink Panther. Horsepower to weight, weight ratio, it can't possibly be as fast as the Pink Panther, but it sure feels faster than the Pink Panther. So anyways, um, yeah, so... Uh, I'm going to tinker with it a little bit more tomorrow and, uh, double check everything. And, uh, I will, uh, look at that pinion angle and then we'll go from there.